What's going on YouTube? My name is James Elmquist and this is my dual PC stream setup. The footage you're currently watching is being recorded on the Canon EOS M50 with an 11 to 22 millimeter lens. Right behind me we have an Elgato green screen. Absolutely fantastic. Folds down, collapses into uh, you know this giant long stick looking thing. You can pick it up, carry it wherever and just set it up with the utmost convenience. It's a little small but uh, you know, totally worth uh, the package you could put it in and then carry it around. We got a GTR racing chair. By the way, almost everything you're gonna see has been purchased on Amazon and a few items on Newegg. Both of these white tables that I'm using as desks have, uh, have been purchased at Target for the low cost of $50. Awesome. Spent a lot of money on hardware. To start things off, we got the Corsair K95 RGB keyboard. Keep an Xbox uh, One controller around just in case I want to play like some Super Monkey Ball or Grand Theft Auto. Nobody likes driving in Grand Theft Auto with a keyboard. It sucks. Uh, if you're hating on the MacBook, guys, it's only uh, only to read your comments and chat. Twitch.tv slash vlog underscore master. We got a, uh, you know, just a standard ring light. I think it was only like $90 on Amazon. Now, big boy monitor here, really shelled out. Super important for the stream because it's HDMI 2.0 compatible and the Elgato 4K60 uh, capture card needs an HDMI. It doesn't work with DisplayPort, sadly. So uh, th this has the HDMI 2.0, but I scooped it up for around $500. It is a BenQ XL2730Z. With the DisplayPort, it could do 144 hertz, 1440p. With HDMI, it could do 120 hertz, 1440p. And uh, that is definitely what we're doing. Recently, I had to run over to Micro Center and pick up a new mouse because uh, while raging my face off playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I, uh, I was dinging up not only uh, the Corsair RGB mouse pad, but I was also uh, breaking the, uh, the center click button. Please just focus on not the ground. Okay, if it's focusing on the speaker, this button broke, okay? from raging too hard and then uh, this little piece was starting to break off. So the new uh, the new Phantom Mouse was definitely essential. The DPI is pretty high, but you know, we always keep it a lot lower than you could go. The, I don't know why they go up to like 20,000. Does that make sense? What are you using that on, like a 16K display? Now, quickly moving on to most people's favorite part, the dedicated gaming PC. You know, this is what is uh, allowing us to game at 1440p, 120 hertz, uh, frame rates, you know, pretty impressive stuff. Uh, to start things off, we have a bunch of Corsair fans, LL120, they're trademark fans. Psst, ah, amazing. But no, they're not actually. They don't work at all. They worked for about a week, and I got the Lighting Node, pr the Lighting Node Pro, and uh, the Commander Pro. Gave Corsair all of my money, got all Corsair, and uh, you know what Corsair did? They gave me, uh, it, it's not the fans, dude. It's not the fans, it's the software. Their software is crap. But enough of my fanboy saltiness, guys. Let's get down to business. We have an i7 8700K on ice, guys, being cooled by the IQ whatever Corsair sold me next. Uh, it, it, it's a Corsair liquid cooler. Very nice, keeps it cool, I'm impressed. Uh, sometimes I like to use this setting where uh, it adjusts the color based on CPU temperature. You know, it's uh, it's not too hot right now, but let's uh, let's make it run a little bit. You know, let's make it uh, generate my character. You're gonna see that uh, you're gonna see that CPU warm up uh, from that from that action. You know, it started getting a little pink, but uh, even there, man, it, it's staying relatively cool and. Uh, you know, it can handle it for sure. Now, something worth mentioning, guys, the i7-8700K is currently being overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz. Necessary, maybe. Big PP move, smack like. Uh, we got 32 gigs of Corsair's RGB RAM. Uh, you know, enjoy my money, guys, please. Uh, then, below, that we have an EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 XC edition. Fantastic graphics card. I only wish they still made them so I could get two. Uh, they now make the GeForce RTX 2080 Super Editions that are uh, this thin. This was uh, the smallest one, <laughs> and I eventually wanted to get two, you know, and I knew they would fit. 
but you know, lesson learned, man. Don't don't get your graphics card when they drop because they will be dropping something else. Um, we have below that a PCIe Express port, which all that does is add four more USB 3.0 expansion slots. And that, my friends, is extremely beneficial, especially if you're uh, streaming off your main PC because when you're using nice audio and you're using nice video, it's definitely going to require a USB 3.0, you know? Uh, fancy smancy technology uses that fancy smancy speed. I, I believe LTT or J's Two Cents would word it that, uh, <laughs> that well as well. Yep, that well as well, man. Now the final thing tying this build together is the exposed power supply. We have an RM850X Corsair power supply. I really, really like this one because it uh, it matched the case and it also came with the custom threaded cables. Uh, it was a fantastic bundle. If it's still available, I would cop it because getting custom threaded cables without a bundle deal can, uh, can be pretty pricey and I could tell you that I definitely wouldn't have them had this not already came with them so that that is that is something I could get behind now moving up to the second most important aspect of the setup the dedicated streaming PC this is what holds everything together this is what gets your audio out to your audience this is what gets your video out to your audience it takes everything it is a powerhouse it uploads in real time and streams, okay? It takes some serious hardware. We have a Ryzen 2700. It doesn't do all that much encoding. It didn't need to be the biggest CPU in the world. I didn't feel like it was necessary going for the 3700 because NVIDIA is working really well with Streamlabs software these days, uh, and it could actually handle a lot of the encoding. So for a graphics card with the dedicated streaming PC, I went with an MSI RTX 2060, okay? Fantastic card, haven't had any problems at all, and I think this streaming PC will last longer into the future than my gaming PC will, okay? Because all this thing has to do is encode, and games are gonna continually get more intensive. This thing, I could imagine I will be using it in eight years at least, you know, and I might wanna update my hardware on gaming PC within four. You know, and that's that's just how I see things, because how much higher above 4K60 are we gonna be streaming, guys? You know? And speaking of 4K60, we have the Elgato 4K60 uh, capture card down there. And it is the new one. It is uh, the version two, or whatever they call it, that uh, they can do HDR. Now, the BenQ XL2730Z monitor came out years and years ago, so it's not HDR compatible, but it is nice knowing I have options. By the way, can you tell I'm definitely editing this video as we go? Uh, if you're wondering what I edit with, this is Premiere Pro, guys. And uh, yeah. Uh, we got a second light down here, and uh, basically what that does is it eliminates my shadow that I cast, uh, because that can actually cause quite a bit of glare on, uh, on the street. Now, something extraordinarily important with the stream is how your voice sounds. And my voice on stream, I can promise, sounds a lot better than my voice on the camera microphone, even though I'm using an aftermarket microphone. This microphone is fantastic. It is an MXL 770 condenser mic. I got it on sale on Amazon for like $60. Uh, it came with a microphone cable that was black. It looked a lot better than the red one, but I was like, oh man, red's gonna look awesome. It's not gonna be distracting. And it, it's, it's very distracting. <laughs> I don't know why I still use it. Probably just because I'm upset that I bought it, but yeah, yeah, and then uh, just a basic pop filter. I think this guy was maybe eight or nine bucks. Uh, then since it is a condenser mic, it has to plug into a audio interface. We have a pre-Sonos AudioBox USB 96, and I like it a lot, guys. That is what powers the condenser mic. And below that, we have the pre-Sonos studio monitors, because uh, I am your typical white boy soundcloud rapper uh j elms man spotify itunes whatever j elms vlog underscore master on twitch that's what we do baby 
Now, part of being a Twitch streamer is really bringing your personality uh, to the stream. And part of how I capture that personality is with the Logitech Brio webcam, guys. This is a 4K 60fps capable webcam made by Logitech. Uh, the angle is super wide. If I didn't have this green screen in the back, it, it could literally capture my whole living room. I would show you the living room, but it's uh, it's extremely barren right now because I I moved in right as uh, right as the epidemic was hitting. So I never really had the chance to get too much furniture. But uh, you know, gaming is life. So that's what we've been focused on. Now, before I show you guys how the direct pass-through uh, works, this bottle here is really important to me, not because I have a problem, but because I work for them. This is Drake's Organic Vodka. Currently, we have been using all available resources to make hand sanitizer and get it over to essential workers. And, uh, you know, I just think it's awesome. They're not, they're not paying me to do this, but, you know, as far as an alcohol company goes, we, we got some pretty good ethics, a really good team, and uh, I'm, I'm proud of the things we've been able to accomplish. Now let me show you guys, uh, let me show you guys how the image gets from gaming PC to streaming PC using the capture card. Because I was a little confused at first. See, when you, uh, when you do a direct pass through, you're only allowed to have one monitor on your main display. That's because in the back of the graphics card, you have to have an HDMI 2.0 going into the in slot on the back of the capture card. Then you have to have another HDMI 2.0 going from the out slot down and into the monitor. So basically it's just copying this image with the capture card really, really fast and then shooting it over to the monitor. So basically the monitor thinks that the the capture card is a gaming console rather than the PC. It, it's, you know, it, this is doing all the encoding instead of Streamlabs on this PC. So when I would stream only on this PC at 1440p resolutions, uh, cut down and uploaded to 720p in real time, when I would do that on Twitch, I'd lose at least 30 frames a second or more and it sucked, the streaming wasn't worth it to me. I, uh, I built this dedicated streaming PC. I stopped dropping frames, uh, figured out the direct pass through, had to sacrifice my other two monitors. Uh, it was worth it, I still got them over here. I'm even able to edit video on, uh, on dedicated streaming PC. That's what this will be edited and uploaded on. Now, if at any point during this video you felt lost or you wished I would have gone into more detail on a certain aspect, please comment below and I will definitely get back to you. Making content to me is extraordinarily important and I will be uploading every single day and I want to work with you guys. I want to help you guys. If you have questions, please let me know and uh, we'll figure it out together. I'm new. Uh, you know, I got a couple subscribers, but believe me guys, I'm the next big thing and I want you to be too. And uh, let's do it together, baby. My name is James Elmquist. I'll see you on Twitch. Vlog underscore master. Smack like, subscribe. And uh, wubba lubba dub dub. Yeah, boy.